we've got a case of Veruca needling for you this week. So Eagle Eye viewers will have noticed on the socials I put up the picture for this guy's HPV type 2 lesion, so a mosaic or a filiform type lesion. Came through to me with a range of treatments that have been tried in the past, obviously unsuccessful. It's gradually growing, he's got other lesions on the plantar aspect of the foot. Didn't really want to do anything too aggressive for that, so needling I thought the best to try and confer some immunity with the hope that they will all go. And when I say HPV type 2, nice reference, this is from 2004, so 20 years ago, saying that there were a hundred different types of human papilloma virus, so pretty much double that now. Most of the ones that obviously I see are hands and feet, and they have a predilection for the parts of the body that I see. Most of the others actually are areas that I don't see in my regular clinical practice, thankfully. But needling, one of my go-tos, as you'll know. So, video coming up. Let's have a little look. Kevin, we're going to just see if you're nice and numb after we've done <coughs> that little bit of low flat aesthetic. So, okay. a tiny bit of claret there. So, um, if I sharp a little there, that feel as I'm just pressing. I can sort of feel where the, the callus bit is. Yeah. Sharper blood. So the way the anaesthetic blood, blood, blood is, blood. anaesthetic is very much like a divorce. So it takes away pain, but leaves you with some feeling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know it. Not that I do ex-wife jokes at all. Not much. Well, I was uh, chatting to one of my patients yesterday, actually, Ruth, and he said, "Oh, Mr. Riley, he said my ex-wife, she's an angel." I said, "You're lucky, James." He's still alive. He laughed. I kind of figure it's always okay if you get a smile. Ruth, can I get a little bit more of a chloroprep, please? I'm just going to re redo the skin. So, Kevin, really the first thing we're going to do is just give it a wee shave. Now, one of the there's things we get with the, if you like, the pathology of a veruca is yeah. all of this pinpoint bleeding. And that's almost a sign that is a veruca. And the reason is you get these little blood vessels that kind of go, I'll do this for the camera, they go, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. There you go, top, top, nose, Sorry guys, I just wandered off camera. We're just gonna re-prep that skin. So you get, technical word, papillomatosis, which is basically the blood vessels go a bit nuts. And the grow of the skin. So you take the overlying callus off and it bleeds, and it's kind of almost if you've got a, a callus or a corn, if you're not sure which is which, you give it a wee shave, and if it bleeds, it's more likely, particularly like this pinpoint bleeding, it's more likely a, a veruca, one of those oh. little signs that we do. So I've just re-chloro prepped it, and we're just going to get rid of that off to one side. So one times, oh, can I get another syringe, please? Yes, yeah. because the one I use for the local anaesthetic, like a good clinician, I put it straight in the sim bit. So that's the other line, can you can actually see? Did you find what size? No, 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 just to, to, to get hold of. The yeah, smash it, it's basically just to grab hold of. So I'm actually going to use, I'm just going to say this for the camera for no other reason, I'm actually going to use this little tiddly one just because it's, it's nice and handy. So, Kevin, if you feel any sharpness, we let you know. So how's that feel there? Can't feel it. Awesome. So basically what we do is we do repeated thrusts in a dark light fashion is what the paperwork says. I know it sounds a little bit salacious. So we're trying to pop as many Veruca cells as possible. And we do this for about two and a half hours. You're not got anything planned today, are you? You're okay. No, I'll have a nap. Awesome. Fine. Yeah, you, you nod off, it's fine. So with needling, we're just trying to pop some um, skin cells, which are infected with the virus. And the virus is in the skin, and the body doesn't know it's there. So we're trying to release a, release a few virus cells. I always, in my mind, thinking of the, uh, the lottery. You know when they release the balls? Yeah. It's kind of like that, really. In fact, when I do this as a video, I'm going to get a little five-second clip of Camelot. <laughs> release the balls. And then you're trying to push them into the into the skin. So the body goes, oh, right, Veruca. Oh, I can deal with that. Because at the moment, it is, as my good friend Belinda, who teaches with me on these courses, we say the body is immuno-ignorant. It doesn't know it's there. 
You don't need to do all of them. So in theory, if we can get them, uh, it's not antibodies, it's such as cell mediated, but if we can get the body to kind of go, ah, oh, right, I can mount a defense, then in theory, they all go. Awesome. But it's only 50-50, but it's not got a downside. If I'm having to cut all of these out, there's not going to be much of a skin left on the toe, is there? No. So I often get questions with these about what if you're doing a toe or if you're, if you're close to a joint, which is a really good question. So hopefully you'll see from the video, I'm really just kind of going below. I'm not hitting the bone, I'm just going below the, the skin. All you need to do is skin really, but just going below the, so much for the videos for you, Kevin, below the dermoepidermal junction. So just try to pop the cells yep. and arrange a meeting between the verruca and your immune system. A bit like, uh, like a Tinder date, really. Mm -hmm. If you've used Tinder at all. I used it once last year. Went on a date with this lady I met online. She said she was a size 10. Unfortunately, she was talking about her feet. But she was, you know, she was... She was, I mean, I she was a lovely lady. She was, absolutely. Probably, actually, dated the right guy, to be fair. Mm -hmm. She had the most unusual, her big toe, it was in the middle of a foot. The third toe was there, and the second toe was there. Do you know what she had? Mixed with her. Oh, <laughs> that, brilliant, brilliant. Nobody ever gets that. No, okay. We didn't practice that before, Ruth. Probably. That was really good. Nobody ever gets that. I mean, oh, as Basil Brush always used to say, I do the jokes, but that's fine. Sorry. No, no, it's absolutely fine. I need to remember you what Nina. What was even more interesting, she came in and she also, again, super rare condition, Kevin, she actually had two left feet. Do you know what she was wearing when she came on the date? No. Go on, work it out, you can do it. What she was wearing on her feet? Two left feet, she was wearing, it was a very hot night, flip flips. You'd have got there, given time, you'd have got there. Oh, so just another two hours to do. So basically that's that's enough. We we basically want to create what we call a beefy red wound. So enough to really we've popped a load. I like to use a nice skinny needle just I think that creates a bit more damage. So how long do you leave that before? Great question. So what I'll sometimes do is I'll see it, see a patient back in a week just to kind of take the scab off. Yeah. But then I'll leave it two months. It really takes a couple of months to kick in. I've seen it take longer, and I've seen some cases where the one with needles has gone, and then I'll do the others. Yeah. Best results, which I've had quite a few times, is the all go, which is fabulous. Mm. Because you can see with Kevin having quite a lot of verrucas and some other ones kind of growing elsewhere. If I was going to do something surgical to Kevin, it would be a lot of trauma. And while I, I do a lot of core excisions and verruca excisions, as you know, but mm. you can create some scarring and some recurrences. So for the multiples and the bigger areas, I really like to kind of do less rather than more. Yeah. So the body will take on board even though it's not communicating with the other, with the other That's it. So it's basically a cell mediated response. If you think about your immune system, you've got antibodies and you've got the cell mediated, which is the white blood cells, the T's and the B's. And then there's kind of the two sides of it, and, and the body will kind of go, oh, right, we're okay, because it doesn't know that it's there yeah. and mount a response. Now, what we say we're trying to do is basically arrange a meeting. And then to a degree, the body will kind of go after everything really. The, the downside is there are about 200 different strains of Veruca. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So um, you'll only develop immunity to that particular one. So I've got a patient on the go at the moment, he's got two different strains. Yeah. So I've needled one and all of that strain has gone and I've needled the other one and it's going. So it just, it's really interesting that you've got two different subtypes. You've got, yeah. you've got HPV, Human papillomavirus one and four, and the four, which is this kind of mosaic brucus, they've all gone, and the other one's not yet, but it's on the way. So we're just going to put a light dressing on that, sir. Okay, okay. a little bit of pinpoint bleeding, keep you covered for today. As yeah. you can see, it's not really much of a scab, really, but it can just be a little bit sore. And then we'll see you back next week. We'll take the callus off and okay. then we'll do a two month review and see how you go. Brilliant. Questions, sir? Anything we've not been through? Yeah, I hate those. Yeah. Um, Tell you what, can I get some 16 of the cobra on the wrap?
as in this one here. Thank you. Thank you questions. So with rooms in it, it just spreads from that spot. Well, if I rub my feet, will it spread to the other foot? Great question. So if you swapped every door handle in the hospital, there'd be a Veruca on it. The Veruca is everywhere. Right. So people will say, Veruca, can I get six and three out? Sorry, I don't want to touch that because I've got a bit of clay on my hands. So the Veruca's everywhere. It's not very contagious, so it's got to get into the skin. It needs two things. It needs a little portal of entry um, and typically some hydration, some wetness, which is why you tend to get the swimming pools where it's still wet. Yeah. So if you had a, like a little cut on the other side, if we did a little cut and we we bathe the other foot with Veruca, you probably get a little bit And that foot there, they kind of slowly spread. They're not massively contagious, right. but the different strains have different predilections for the body. So there's, a, there's a, probably a half a dozen or so that like feet. Most of the Veruca viruses like um, the more discrete areas of the body. They're kind of the one to the two, ain't no genital tool. But Veruca, I tend not to see in my practice. So, um, I was wearing boots and that quite a lot, so I was... Uh, so, those, that, so those viruses are everywhere. Yeah. So one of the reasons I like to do something which in theory can convey immunity is if this strain goes and you develop immunity to this strain, this is the theory, then, then they'll all go and you won't get that one again. But there are other strains. Right. Whereas if you've got a Veruca, had a lady back actually on Monday, Kevin, so she had a Veruca about, about the size of the tip of your finger, but underneath here. Yeah. Painful, cut it all out, all gone, very flat scar, pain free, very clean. But she's not immune to it, so in theory, she might get another one grow somewhere else. And so I'm just going to use a little so bit of After this, is it best to try to get, let the air get to it, I think? Right. Obviously, keep it covered, but I may not put boots on. Yeah, no, no, you're fine. No, you're fine. This is, this is just, just a, a, a very sort of modest wound, really. So this is just because of a touch of bleeding. So keep this on till tomorrow. Yep. Really, that's just so we don't make a mess on the floor because we just have it cleaned. <laughs> but it's a very simple wound, doesn't it? This can come off tomorrow. Nothing fancy with that at all. Yep. Okay. We'll see you back next week. That's to get the callus off. I've seen the old one that gets quite a nasty S scar scalp. So yep. I'd like to bribe that down. Okay. I'm losing the, the toe. And then at two months, we'll see if they've gone. So I've had patients who come back at two months with as I've pared away the callus underneath, it's just been normal skin. That's my ideal for you, is right. in two months' time, we're very good for it. If you're a bit better, I repeat. If you're no better, well, think about plan B. Right, okay. All right, Philip. So for next week, right, okay. All right, I'll stop the video there. Thank you for that, sir. Here's the paper that kick-started needling, at least in the UK podiatry world, by Ivan and Belinda. I typically review patients at one week to remove the eschar scab, and again at two months for a review and I would say my practice probably about 50% effective. I've certainly re-needled some patients but it's been a useful technique for those that I've not wanted to do aggressive curatage for.